plasticity pay as you go, this opportunity to access it and deliver these services from uh, in, in, in a form that's very consumable for both the manufacturer and for the person wanting the good to be manufactured, that obviously lowers the risk of things like that. And areas we're also seeing that happen is medicine. So we're seeing medicine as a service. We're seeing transport as a service. We're seeing it expand to all these different areas. And I think that's a fundamentally interesting paradigm to look at for whatever job you're in, whatever area you're interested in, can we apply these ideas? Because it's a strong risk reducer. It's a really powerful way of lowering the risk involved with both delivering that and also for people purchasing and acquiring those services. Uh, and what I thought I just wanted to talk about, the last topic, the last chapter in my book, is really about tying all this together. So it's not just a bunch of ad hoc topics where we look at a few different things and, and they're just a bunch of different topics and that's really nice and interesting. We want to know what is, what is the importance of all this? Why is this really important that we lower the risk of innovation? What will that lead to? What type of benefits can we see given that we're going to lower risk? And that's the topic I explore in my final chapter. And I introduced the concept of a virtuous innovation cycle. Now, the virtuous innovation cycle is actually something when you hear about it, you think, wow, that sounds, that sounds like it could be something quite fancy and complex, but it's not. It's based on a really simple premise. And the really simple premise is, what happens when we lower the risk of innovation? Innovation becomes more successful. That's what happens. There are less failures. If innovation becomes less risky, more innovation succeeds, less innovation fails. And that's really the fundamental idea, and that's obvious, right? That's, that's a really obvious statement. But where does that lead us? It leads us to this virtuous cycle of innovation because if more innovation succeeds, it means innovation as an investment opportunity becomes more attractive. It means when we look to innovate, we know it's got a higher chance of success. So if we choose what we're going to do, if we're going to innovate or not innovate, then we can see that innovation becomes a more attractive option because more of it's successful. And if more innovation succeeds and it becomes a more attractive investment option, that means that there'll be more investment in innovation. People will choose to invest more money in innovation. And you can see we come back to the start of the cycle where if people choose to invest more in innovation and that innovation has less risk, then there'll be more money left over to innovate and invest in innovation. So we enter into the cycle where we have more successful innovations that leads us to investing more in innovations that leads us to having more resources to allocate to innovation. So we enter this really, really sort of powerful cycle, this virtuous cycle of innovation where innovation gets supercharged by simply reducing the risk involved in innovation. That's the core concept behind my book. Why innovation, why lowering the risk of innovation is so important because if we're going to solve things like global poverty, or hunger, or any of the major issues facing us today, we're going to need to develop these virtuous cycles of innovation. We're going to need to lower risk. We're going to need to make innovation the default choice for all our activities. And that's really what I think the most important message of the book is at the end of it, that these tools are not just important for, for innovation and reducing the risk of one-off projects and reducing the risk of single innovation, but it's really important because it's about making innovation an attractive opportunity, about making innovation an attractive investment opportunity. And that's really what I think the takeaway message is from my book. So if you'd like more information, there's a website at www.innovationtoolsbook.com. Um, I've got copies of the book here today if people would like some, so come and talk to me afterwards. And, uh, and thank you all for your attention today. Woo!